together in more kind of a little more broader stance. Uh, and then you want to bend your knees. And you want to have your back up straight. You don't want to be leaning forward or anything. You want to be nice, nice and upright. Uh, and then we don't want to be showing all this target area to our opponent. Because in FA, what we're using, um, full body target. So I can hit you on that arm, on that arm, and you put your foot, and you on your head, it doesn't matter. I can hit you. So you want to show as little target area as possible. So you want to turn, not completely sideways, but about not, not quite 45, but a little bit more of a, of a turn away from your opponent than a 45. Um, and, and head up. You don't want to be putting your head forward because put your head forward, that's target area. That's close to your opponent. So next comes the arm. You want to be nice and relaxed. So just lay first off, just put your sword straight down and have it line up with your, with your front foot facing your opponent. Now we're nice in this puppy stance. Really, all that we have to do from this point is just raise our arms straight up to our point. There you go. We almost want our arm to be perpendicular to the ground, but it's a little bit, a little bit of an incline. And then we want our blade to be pointed right at our opponent, either here, here, or here. So one of these three, one of these three spots. That's where we want the tip to be pointed. Not where it's like I can see that in front of the tip, but my tip is pointing right at your face. So right there. So that when your opponent looks at you. They look straight down the blade onto the bell, and they can't see any of your arm. Your arm is the most vulnerable part of you because it's the closest to your opponent. And in that way, that's what you're going to try to hit first. You're going to want to go for the arm because that's closer. You can say, oh, I don't have to get as close to you if I want to hit you here and if I want to hit you here. Like, that's, that's a lot closer. So that, that, I, that, I would want to go for that shot first. So if you hide your arm completely behind your bell, like this, then it's going to be much harder for your opponent to see you. And if you're showing some, the key is not to move your bell, the key is to move your arm. So what you want to do is, have this here, we're using Yeah, that's good. Alright. Alright, and for both uh, pistol grips, you can either hold it as a, um, with your thumb going up, or a lot of people want to hold it just to the side. Um, with your thumb pointing out about a third degree angle from the vertical. Uh, the reason you'll want that is because you'll have a lot more power going when you're doing your parry, when you're initially making your parries. Um, and you'll actually be able to hide your arm that here too, because this, this thickness of your arm is smaller than this thickness most of the time. So you'll be able to hide it a lot better. Um, and you'll be able to cover this back, this side portion of your arm. So a lot of times people will sit with their thumbs pointing up here, when if they just rotate it like this, it hides it. Is up here, and all I have to do is rotate it and just hide it. This part. Yeah, yeah, it just immediately hides all of that. So, a lot of times you'll see people, especially with a French grip, which is that grip over there, the long, normal looking sword grip, um, a lot of people using that will have it just laying along the top of their arm because that's how they can hide the rest of their arm. It's very easy that way. Um, either way, both of them basically will end up doing the same type of motions. There's very little difference between them. So, um, alright, so on guard. We, I can think, it, an easy way to remember if you think you're doing something wrong, think elbow in and bell out. Elbow in close to your body, bell out, and then also tip in. There you go. Much better. It's much better to show this part of your arm than it is to show this part of your arm. So, but showing neither of them is, is, is preferable. So, right about here. Keep this arm fairly close to your body. You don't want it to, to stray away. And. Alright, completely you relax your arm. But hold on to the sword. If I were let go of your arm fall. No, no. Keep, keep hold on to the sword. But if I were let go of the sword with your arm fall to the ground. Make it sure, make sure it fall to the ground. Let go, hold on, hold on. Loosen, 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 loosen. There you go. There you go. Alright. Nope, let it fall. Nope, let it fall. I would let it fall. Yeah, let it fall. Let it, if, I, if I drop, if I let go, just your arm, I'm controlling your arm right now. There you go, perfect. Good, 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 good. All right, very nice and loose, nice and loose. All right, now loose, 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 loose. Tighten up again. There you go. Oh, don't follow me. Let go. There you go. All right. Now I'm going to slowly let go and you read. Perfect. That's what you want to be, nice and relaxed. You don't want this to be tense. The more tense that you are, the, the less you'll be able to read. 
react because your muscles are already contracted in position. Um, it's all about very, 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 very quick timing. Um, for Epe, there's something called a double touch when both people get in touch. That touch is determined by one eighth of a second. So if you're one eighth of a second within touching, then it will give you, then, it, then both lights will go off. And sometimes your arm being clenched and your arm being unclenched can be the difference between getting a double up, double touch or a single light. So the more loose and relaxed your body is, the better it's supposed to sound what we'll do is we'll start up here. And we go today, so we're going to take care of it this weekend. We just sink, and everything sinks. So all your arms, both arms, your blade goes low, your legs go down, you just let everything out. It's nice and relaxed and straighten your back. That's, that, that's perfect, perfect position. Basically, you want everything to be relaxed and everything to be low and nice and relaxed except for your, except for your back. It's the only thing that's involved. And it's just something a lot to be used to. Um, but let's see let's your right back. Alright, I'll see you in a second. Okay. No, I'm controlling you. No. Let go. I'm Hold on, you're late. Because you need your, wrist, right. your wrist and your hands are the only thing that's strong. I've got everything else. Yeah. Yeah, like it. Actually, how long are you doing today? There we go. That's much better. Alright, loose, loose, loose.
Um, and that's, that's not always the best thing to do. So make sure that you're always, always moving at something. It doesn't have to be that, like pushing or retreating, but just, just constantly moving them. If you stand there, it's easy, easy, easy to take advantage. So um, you know, if you're doing a different weapon, like foil or saber, there would be a lot more motion, which I'll explain point why. But um, for Epe, you don't need to move as much, but you still should move some, even if it's just rocking in place, because the motion is important to um, keep your opponent from getting the better of you you're moving so they don't know where you're going to move to. You can be just moving and also boom. So don't, don't forget to move. All right, next thing, attacking. Attacking is very easy. There's two steps to attacking. The first one, when you start off on guard, is you find your target and you extend. It's a full extension of the arm. And that's the only thing that moves is the arm. Um, most of the time it will be a twist so that your thumb is up. Almost every single extension be, or end up with being your thumbs up. The only time that won't be is when you're doing a threaten and to do something else. But if you're actually going to lunge, thumb goes up. So lunge is so that your thumb is up. But you're, the rest of your body is still in the on guard. So you start off on guard and it's just extend. And your, your, your tips are pointing right at your target. And you should know exactly where it's going to go. The second part of that is the motion, which is very easy. It's a step with the front foot and a push with the back foot. So using only a step, it's a step, but using only the push, it's a push. So you want to combine the two of them so that it's an extend, lunge. And lunge, your front foot should be perpendicular to the ground. You don't want it to be over or not so far over, but straight up. Um, the best lunge should be that your uh, thigh is perpendicular to the ground, but that is very hard to do, so I don't expect you guys to do it. Um, lunging here is fine for now. Um, then your back leg should be completely flat um, for now. And your back leg should be as straight as possible. So you should push with your back foot and it's completely straight. And then this foot is a step. So we start off on guard. Extend. Lunge. 